Hi there, and welcome to my video, which today is called Death is Not Random. So first of all, I wanted to start by explaining just a teeny bit again about who I am, because sometimes people say, how do you know this information? So basically, um, I had a near-death experience in 2006, and you can actually um, you, you, you can actually look up my story, uh, you can um, read my book, look up my story, look up my website, anitamorjani.com. I had a near-death experience where I died from end-stage cancer, and um, I crossed over to the other side, and when I crossed over, I got this understanding um, of what it was, what it's like to die, to be on the other side. So I wanted to explain that first of all, and so everything I express are my is it comes from my understanding of the other side i don't want to claim that i know the one and only truth and and all that but at the same time i want to just clarify that my information is not gleaned from books or anything it is from first-hand experience of having crossed over and been there and absorbing the feeling and actually being on the other side so when and when i was on the other side i had left behind my body i was pure spirit pure soul pure essence um, and i know what that feels like and so when I, when I do these videos, when I answer questions, it's coming from the perspective of being on the other side. So hence my view from the other side. How does life, uh, what does life look like viewing from that perspective? What does the world look like and the things that happen in the world? So um, I can still kind of project myself to when I was there and what I would feel because when I was there there was incredible clarity it was like I I understood why I had got sick I understood how it was that my life had ended up being the way it was and how it came to be that I was lying in that hospital bed dying and so, um, and so these videos is just my way of offering my view from that side. So now, um, I want to talk today about uh, death not being random. A lot of people still believe that we are victims of death, and I want to clarify that. There isn't one single reason for death, though. And, but uh, there are multiple reasons, and I want to give you several of the reasons. But in every case, your soul, your higher self, has a part in choosing that moment in time to exit this planet. And that's really what I want to get at today. So, first of all, a question that comes up time and time again is people constantly ask me, how come you got a second chance at life and my so-and-so, you know, my daughter, my sister, my mother, they didn't come back. Why you? Why did you get chosen? So I want to clarify here, I was not chosen. That was something between my soul and source. And if um, somebody that you know and love did not come back, uh, it was something between their soul and source. And um, and it does not mean they didn't love you enough. In fact, it's the total opposite. And I'll explain that a little bit more. But what I want you to realize is that it's so amazing on the other side, so incredibly amazing that your loved ones on the other side are not suffering. They are free and they are able to help you in ways they couldn't help you while they were here. They're able to support you in ways that they couldn't support you while they were here because of whatever limitations that we have as physical beings. So perhaps instead of saying, why did I get the chance to come back and why did they lose the battle and cross over? Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe they were the ones that won and got to go over there and I was sent back. Maybe I'm the unlucky one and they were the lucky ones. So perhaps try looking at it that way because life isn't always easy. For me, coming back, um, the journey hasn't always been easy. 
uh, it is actually easier being on that side. In other words, I sometimes joke and I say it's easier being dead than alive. Um, and although I say it half kidding, it's actually true. But that does not mean you should cut your life short. You absolutely should not because your soul chose to be here. Um, so now going back to um, reasons why people die, um, there are so many reasons. Sometimes souls actually know that they fixed the date. They know that their journey on this planet is for a certain amount of time. And even the death, the timing of their death is part of their life purpose. So sometimes, for example, when you have a disabled, um, a disabled or a, a special needs child, an innocent child, and they die quite young, it means that they have already served what they, um, what they came here to serve. And I will just give you some examples of um, people who I feel left at the time that their soul felt that their work here was complete. And one of the people um, who many of you might know of her, her name is Claire Wineland. She was a beautiful, inspirational soul um, who, who actually used to breathe with the aid of oxygen. She was born with an affliction to her lungs. She died very young. And I truly believe that her soul knew that her purpose for what she came here to accomplish was completed, and that's why her soul left. And so, and so with many other people um, also, we hear stories all the time of people who are, when they are on their deathbed, they don't actually die until all their loved ones come and are in front of them. Like they might be waiting for a family member to arrive and they don't cross over until that family member arrives, which means that your soul has a certain... Um, has a certain amount of control over your the time you die, the time, the day. But part of your departure is also part of your soul's journey. I also believe that there are certain people who maybe have completed their purpose, but um, they kind of have a choice. They're now like at this place where in life where it doesn't matter if they stay or they go. And so they can create an exit point, and I call that exit points, where it can come in the form of an illness or, or an accident, and they can create that to leave. And I'll give you an example that I sensed this from my mom many years ago, and back in 2014, I was living in Hong Kong at the time, and my mom was in India. And even though we weren't in the same country, we were both still in Asia, and I was just a direct flight away, and I used to go and visit her uh, several times a year. Um, what happened, though, in 2014, we had made this big decision to leave Asia, to leave Hong Kong, and to move to the United States. And literally when... And I know that my mom was not happy about me moving, but everything in my body and everything in Danny's body told me that we had to make this move. And so, um, uh, and so it, um, when, when we had packed everything, we'd packed our home, um, we had literally shipped whatever we needed to ship, and we were just, we were literally ready to go. We were living in a hotel for those last few days before leaving Hong Kong to fly to California. We were going to arrive at Los Angeles airport. And literally just a few days before, this is in September 2014, my mom in India has a fall and breaks her hip. And so I, we had to stall our plans of leaving Hong Kong to go to the United States. I had to fly straight to India to be with my mom. She refused to have the hip surgery until I got there. My brother was there, and we were there with my mom, my sister-in-law, and, you know, so we were all there taking care of her during that time, and I was there with her through the surgery. The doctors, because of my mom's age, she was about 88 at that time, 
um, the doctors told me that she that the that the surgery was a high risk for her because of her age. She may or may not make it, even though it was just a hip surgery. She may or may not make it, and they told me to be prepared. So I was um, really, really distraught and sad and thinking, oh my gosh, how can I leave her like this? So there I was, we were with her, and she came out of the surgery totally, uh, you know, the surgery was successful, but when she was delirious and she was in the intensive care unit, I remember I was sitting there with her, and she started seeing beings around her. And she was asking me, and she said, she said, who are these people in the room? And I said, there's no one here. And she said, can't you see them? They're here. They're around me. Um, and so when she said that, I got chills, but also I started to feel really sad. I thought, oh, no, they've come to get her. For me, that's a sign that her loved ones are coming to get her. And so I really didn't want her to go. But I said to her that, you know, you have to do whatever your higher self wants to do. But, and this is what I said to her, I said, but I want you to know that me moving to America does not mean I'm not going to come and visit you. And I told her that I would call her regularly and I told her that I would come and visit her twice a year, no matter what, even though it was such a long distance um, and we had to change flights and stuff like that. I said, I will still come twice a year, even though I'm moving that far away. And I was telling her this over and over. She started to come out of that space that she was in and then I was, would remind her, I'm going to come back twice a year. I'm going to call her. What subsequently happened was that she healed fully. She healed fully and she is still alive today. And this is six years on. So this was in 2014. It's seven years on. Sorry, it's seven years on. And she is now in her 90s. She's about 94. Um, and she is still hanging in there. And I truly feel that she had created like an exit point for her, that if um, she was not needed here anymore, she was ready to go. But because I said that I would come back and I would still call her, she actually pulled through. I think that people create exit points like that, where it's like a soft opening, where there's an opportunity that if they choose to go, they can go. But if there's a reason for them to stay, they will stay. I hear stories all the time, like, for example, um, you know the actress Carrie Fisher? She was, the, uh, she, she was uh, on Star Wars. Um, she was Princess Leia on Star Wars. And um, she was really, really sick with cancer. And her mother is a famous actress, Debbie Reynolds. Her mother was taking care of her while she was sick. Well, um, Carrie Fisher didn't make it. She transcended and went to this beautiful space on the other side. And her mom literally followed her within a day or two of her passing. It was like her mom lost her reason to live. I also know that um, of people, and I hear this a lot, where people's lives become so difficult and so painful. I know of someone personally who this happened to, where she was telling me how difficult her life was and how she felt stuck and backed into a corner with no way out. And then a couple of weeks later, she was diagnosed with cancer and she crossed over. Um, so I know that because also of what it felt for me when I was on the other side, I know that death is not random. Um, when I was there on the other side, I knew that I had the choice in that moment, but I also knew that my purpose wasn't complete and I needed to come back. There is a feeling, there is a feeling in that choice that will I be able to continue to complete my purpose from that side? Will it be easier for me to complete my purpose from that side? Or will it be easier for me to complete my purpose by coming back here to the physical. For me, it felt like it was easier to complete it from the physical. For some people, it could feel like, oh, 
maybe I kind of backed myself into a corner a little too much, it might be easier for me to complete my purpose from that side. Um, another example I wanted to give you is a dear friend of mine. Her name is Scarlett Lewis. She lost her son, Jesse, um, six years old. See, and another example of a little child passing away, six years old. She lost her son in the Sandy Hook school shooting. When she looks back on the day that the shooting happened, she actually remembers that in the, on the morning of the shooting, Jesse did some things that he would not normally do. He actually wrote goodbye um, on the, the, it was snowing and the car was frosted over and he wrote the words goodbye on the car windscreen. And he wouldn't, he's never done that before. And there were a few other signs, which I don't recall right now, but she mentioned to me that there were many other signs that were really unusual. It was like he knew he was leaving on that day. So his soul knew that this was his last day. So this was not some random accident for his soul. The other thing that was really special about Jesse is that he was only six years old, but before he left, um, some, some of the other kids actually reported afterwards that before Jesse passed, before he was shot, he was actually running to rescue some of the other kids from the bullets before he himself succumbed. So he was a little hero at age six. And I'm getting chills right now. So for me, getting chills is spirit telling me that what you are saying is truth. And it's almost like when I get chills, what it means is that when I'm talking about a person who is deceased, what it means is that that deceased person is acknowledging me and what I'm saying. So that's a sign for me. So I just wanted to share that. So whenever I'm talking about a deceased person and I get these chills all the way through my body, um, that's the sign that, oh, that person heard me and they're sending me a signal. Um, so I have tons of stories like that. But also when I was on the other side, I myself was on the other side, I realized my brother was coming to see me. He was flying in from India to come and see me. And I felt that I had to wait, that I had to stay alive until he got to me because otherwise um, he would be distraught if he arrived and I had already passed. So I now understand how it is that people actually stay alive. Um, while that people, you know, when they're waiting for their loved ones to arrive. Um, there are so many more. Oh, here's another one. Um, Wayne Dyer, he passed away on the 30th of August, 2015. And if you look it up on Wikipedia, it'll say August 29th, but it's the night of August 29th. He was discovered on the morning of August 30th, so he could have passed after midnight. But, um, but um, we and Hay House and everybody uses the date of August 30 to mark his death anniversary. And so they've always used that date from the beginning. Two years later, to the day on August 30th, Louise Hay passed away. For those of you who don't know, um, both Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer were literally the flagships, the holders of Hay House. They are the main stayers of Hay House. And it was almost as if Louise was ready to go around that time, but specifically chose that day. So there would on be only one day to celebrate the lives of both of them for Hay House and everybody associated with them in Hay House. It was like she deliberately chose that date. Um, I also remember when I was uh, younger, um, we had these friends, this couple <clears throat> who had three kids who were grown up kids. Um, and so this couple, the, the man passed away sudden, seemingly suddenly. And then, um, and his wife was so heartbroken and she was in so much grief and we were approaching the death of the anniversary, the first anniversary of his death. And they are Indian people like us. And in our culture, 
the first anniversary of a person's death is a really huge deal. There's like big ceremonies and big events that you have to kind of do to mark the passing of one year of the person's death. I remember that his wife was really having trouble um, coming up to that date. She was literally dreading it because she loved him so much and missed him so much and was so heartbroken. She just couldn't face that one year death anniversary. And do you know what happened? She died on that day, on that same day, one year after he passed. So I know even from my experience on the other side, that death is not random. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is so that you don't feel like a victim and so that you don't feel so afraid of death and so that you don't feel that the people who have passed on were a victim of death. I feel this way um, with whether somebody dies from cancer or COVID. It's not an accident. It's not random. Even if they die in a crash, even if they die in an air crash, how many stories have you heard of people who were supposed to be on a flight and didn't take that flight? Um, it's or of 9-11 and people who were supposed to go to work and they didn't go to work. So it is something that is between your soul and source. The timing of it is between your soul and source. There isn't just one reason. It isn't just that you decided before you came here, this is the date and that's it, you're going. It's not necessarily that. But it could be that if your date is part of the reason of your purpose. Sometimes your timing is part of your purpose because you have come here to actually, um, you've come here to, to, to do something that, and your death also leaves an impact to the people around you. So for those of you who are um, left behind, you need to do what you need to do to heal yourself when you lo lose loved ones. Your loved ones want you to be happy again. They are guiding you. So number one is they do not leave because they don't love you enough. That's never the case. They love you unconditionally. And if they leave, if they have chosen to leave, it's truly because they think they can do more good from the other side than this side. One person who I really sensed chose to leave, um, the reason she chose to leave is because I feel that she truly felt that she had messed up the lives of the people she loved. And she truly felt that they were better off without her here and that she truly felt she could do more from the other side. I got that strong feeling from her. So these are the different reasons that people leave. The other thing I want to tell you is that if somebody commits um, suicide, if somebody takes their own life, they are not suffering. No matter what circumstances under what somebody leaves, whether it's by accident, whether it's through illness, whether it's by taking their own life, they are not suffering on the other side. They are not being punished. Um, many of you have been brought up to believe that if you take your own life, you're going to be punished on the other side. That is a cultural belief. That's part of your cultural field. It's not part of the reality, the esoteric field, the real reality. Um, so you need to know that even if your loved one has taken their own life, they are not suffering. The other side is only love, only love, only love. I cannot say this enough. Um, there is no way that you would suffer so much here to the point of wanting to take your life that you would cross over only to suffer more. That doesn't even make sense to me. Um, how can people say that God is love and then, and then say God does all these things? That makes no sense to me. Um, so in our cultural beliefs of religions, there is so much paradox and contradiction but when you actually cross over, there is no contradiction. 
It is only love. And your loved ones who have taken their own lives are not going to be asked to do it over and over again till they get it right. No, these are all human constructs. When you're there, there is only pure love, freedom, liberation, and a desire, a desire to improve the life of the people here on this earth. Our loved ones, no matter who they are, even if we didn't get along with them well when they were in physical form, even if they were disturbed, even if they were, um, if they were um, addicted, whatever circumstances, even if they had PTSD, no matter what, they are not suffering if they are when once they cross over to the other side. They are experiencing bliss. And what do they do? They actually support us. They really do. They support us. And if you want their help and their support, you have to be open to it. You have to be open to it, allow it, and ask for it. Because they can't come to you if you are closed off. So what I really want to leave you with is that you are not a victim of death. And why is it important for me to say that? Because one of the things that caused me to get cancer in the first place was that I lived in fear of death. And I see this happening again now in the times we live in, where constantly we're being bombarded with information about how many people are dying every day from this pandemic. Um, and I used to fear cancer. I used to, I watched people die from cancer. I thought we are victims of what happens to us. I thought we are victims of death. I thought we are victims of our diseases. We are not. We are not. Your job is to open up to the guidance, allow spirit to work through you, find your joy, stop buying into victim mentality, because remember, victim mentality sells. Um, one of the things that's so common here in our paradigm is that people are always telling you that if you don't do this, you're going to die. If you don't do this, you're going to get sick. If you don't do this, you're going to get sick. And I have exactly what you need not to get sick. I want to tell you, nobody has power over you. Nobody has the power to tell you when you are going to die. That is between you, your soul and source. Not even a doctor can tell you when you're going to die. They told me I was going to die on February the 2nd, 2006. 15 years on, uh, 15 and a half years on, I am still here and I am sharing this message so that you know that you can step into your power, tune into your own soul, tune into your higher self and allow your higher self to express itself through you fearlessly. Claim your own life. Don't let anyone own your power. Your life is yours. Your soul is yours. It expresses itself through you. Love yourself. Work on getting more confident. Work on loving yourself more. Work on trusting your higher self. And trust what feels good to you. Really, if what I'm saying feels good to you, trust it. If it doesn't feel good, if it brings you to fear, disregard it. Disregard messages that bring you fear because they actually deplete you. I'm not saying throw caution to the wind, but what I am saying is that when you love yourself, you will be guided to do the right thing at the right time. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you liked this video, please click like, please follow me on social media, please subscribe to my channels and to my newsletter, and I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye!